Hi, I'm Isabel Gerber, and I am the creator of No Good Nights. So, the basic storyline of this tale is that Maleficent, the dark sorceress, has taken over the world of Grimm, the world of fairy tales, pretty much. And she and the other villains of the tales um, maintain the order by sending out these beasts, pretty much as, I'd like to say, watch guards? Yeah, that's the best word to describe it. They're like watch guards, and though they cannot speak, they certainly will know if you're stepping out of order or not and take care of you. And by take care of, pretty much eat you whole. That's, yeah. <laughs> um, and so because of the fact that these beasts are out there and they're giving the villains the upper hand, uh, the fairy tale characters such as Cinderella, Snow White, um, the Seven Dwarves, etc., become these people known as hunters. But of course, not every not every fairy tale character is a hunter. It's pretty much um, those who know they can take care of themselves. It's not an easy task taking care of um, Maleficent's creatures. Um. So. The whole world itself, the world of Grimm, it's a little difficult to describe actually because of the mere fact that it's more one of those worlds where the whole visual aspect tells a tale. I haven't gotten to the um, art for the world yet, but I was looking through these um, old pictures and um, these fairy tale illustrations and forest um, pictures. You can actually see here that in these original um, drawings, there's actually very bright colors. And for what I was going for is pretty much the exact opposite of that to give the feel. It has this very uh, red, mainly color palette, red, black, some blue to make it stand out, and it's very, very dark, that's one thing for sure. It's kind of almost meant to represent the good deal of violence and bloodshed that's actually taking place in fairy tales. Throughout um, the whole series, the vibe of no Good Nights is actually going to change um, surrounding and background wise. It's going to go from this almost majestic like red, this beautiful red to like a very dark um, setting because the story is going to get darker as it goes on. And here I actually um, put up a mock setup for a poster so I could see how um, the feel of each red would go along with the characters, and yeah, it eventually led to this. Digging more deeper into the backstory aspect of the world, it's uh, like I said, um, Maleficent's monsters are keeping everything in line, and you can easily tell that in the world. There's a lot of damaged villages. There's a lot of ghost towns. It's very crumpled. There honestly is more refugee camps than actual cities, and the cities that do remain in the world rim are surrounded by big giant walls to keep the monsters out. Even though, however, there are still a few monsters that can get in and are just roaming around in the forests. Um, it's kind of sad looking almost. It's you can't help but feel bad for these characters when you look into the world of Grimm. It's, there's a lot of um, burnt towns, almost, um, that are caused by fire-type beasts, and it's like a lot of heavy-duty di damage is done. Now, I know you Attack on Titan fans are gonna really like this part here. Um, actually, the inner walls for um, the cities that survive is actually kind of what gave me the idea, um, you know, from Attack on Titan, obviously, to keep away the monsters. And actually, it almost is a bit like the Great Wall of China. There is one specific city, the main city, that stretches on for miles and miles and goes completely around 
um, and it's this enormous um, structure. But however, in the villages, though, yes, it may look visually splendor, despite, you know, the dark palettes, um, it's actually very run down and very burnt. And it's easy to tell that these people are suffering and they're struggling because they don't have walls to protect them from the Beast of Grimm. And from Maleficent's Wrath. I like this specific picture because it shows a very good example of the rundown cities. It's very, um, it has that red palette, but also it has a lot of shadow in it. And that's because it's like almost this dark fog has fallen almost upon the world. I think world. what makes this world so interesting, um, not only to myself, but a good deal of others, I mean, if you think about the story of dark fairy tales, fairy tales gone wrong, etc., has been played many times, but I think that's because of the fact people love the fact that the, fa the original fairy tales were actually a lot more dark than um, expected. For example, in Cinderella, the stepsisters actually get their eyes pecked out, they become blinded at Cinderella's wedding as punishment for being so cruel. And in Pinocchio, the thieving cat tries to steal Pinocchio's gold, which he has hidden in his mouth. And when he reaches in his mouth to take away the gold, Pinocchio actually manages to bite off the cat's hand. And it's very, very gruesome. I mean, especially the tales of Grimm. I honestly don't really think there's a happy ending, except for um, Red Riding Hood. Which even then, it's a pretty um, dark ending. They fill the, the wolf's stomach with stones and pretty much just let him suffer and die. And yeah. But I think, honestly, that's what makes it so admirable. It's not Disney. Though Disney, yes, has made excellent takes on the tales and has made it kid friendly and also then. It lets the kids experience the fairy tales when they're older and become more interested in it. Um, the story is still itself, um, despite the basic outline, very, very different. It doesn't really match at all what the original authors had in mind. And that's why I hope, honestly, to present in No Good Nights, so uh, to show aspects of the, each fairy tale character's backstory with elements of the original fairy tales, not just spin offs, but um, literally just the darkness of each fairy tale. Well, thank you for watching this video um, informing you about the world of No Good Nights. Um, I hope that you could join me in creating this world, um, this web series, and um, sharing it with people um, all over the internet. Or, if that's not really your thing, then that's okay if it's not, and you just read, watch this because you were interested, um, then I hope that you enjoy the series once it comes out um, next school year. Thank you, and I'll see you next video.